Good day. I am Juan Senor Carlos Estrada, and I greet all of the participants in this Jesus Center Life International Conference. I am going to speak about a topic that is very much in line also with what Pope Francis has in his heart, and that is mercy. But in order to complete this concept of mercy, perhaps as the conference organizers have entitled my talk, we will deal with penance, a great miracle of mercy and joy. Let us begin with understanding what penance is. What is penance for us? We usually have associated it with traditional penitential practices. One thinks of fasting, prayer, almsgiving. These have been the traditional practices in the church, penitential practices, that is. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church also highlights these as penitential practices. In some cultures, penitential practices can vary. Sacrifice may involve, in fact, even doing great sacrifices. In my country, the Philippines, uh, we are known to have these bloody flagellations, especially during the period of Holy Week. Other persons do other things which entail great sacrifices. These are all very valuable works of penance, provided that this external form of penance is accompanied by an interior penance. And what is this interior penance that the Church speaks of? Let us take a look at what the Catechism tells us. It begins by saying that Jesus calls us to conversion and penance. He, as the Catechism points out, does not aim first at outward works. The scriptures will talk about sackcloth, ashes, signs of penance, that someone is doing penance. Um, one talks about fasting and mortification. But Jesus focuses on the conversion of the heart, an interior conversion. And the Catechism points out, without this, such penances remain sterile and false. However, interior conversion urges expression in visible signs, gestures, and works of penance. Hence, exterior forms of penance have to arise from within, from this conversion of the heart, that interior conversion, which is what gives authenticity to exterior forms of penance. A person could perform great works of penance, great sacrifices, and still not have this change of heart that leads him to love God above all things and to love neighbor for the love of God. The Catechism also therefore tells us interior repentance is a radical reorientation of our whole life. A return, a conversion to God with all our heart, an end of sin, a turning away from evil with repugnance toward the evil actions we have committed. At the same time, it entails the desire and resolution to change one's life with hope in God's mercy and trust in the help of His grace. Here we have a very complete description of what endure repentance or penance is all about. A radical reorientation of our whole life, a return, a conversion to God with all our heart, an end of sin, a turning away from evil, with repugnance towards the evil actions we have committed. It is accompanied or has to be accompanied by this desire and resolution to change one's life, not only through our own efforts, but hoping in God's mercy and trusting in the help of His grace. Because by ourselves, we cannot. By ourselves, with all of our weakness, we are not moved to repentance. It is God who takes the initiative. Let us briefly contemplate the parable of the prodigal son. Jesus talks about the son who asks for his share of the inheritance. He goes to far off country, spends his money and loose living, but then a famine strikes 
and in his penury, he has to be contented with taking care of swine. And the gospel mentions that he would have been very happy to have even been offered the food that the swine ate, but even that was denied of him. Well, this is what happens to persons who turn away from God through sin. It is our very own experience. This going away from God, um, this going out of our father's house to some far off country may have happened on several occasions. However, you and I have not despaired. Like the prodigal son, he comes to his senses. He realizes the wrong that he has done. He thinks about the good things that he has enjoyed in his father's house and how even his, the servants of his father are enjoying the very same things that the children have been enjoying. So therefore, he decides to go back to his father's house. Imagine the humility that this prodigal son had to build up within himself to return. He left out with all pride, considering himself self-sufficient. Now, he has to return in a humble manner. But we see the father waiting for his son to return. In fact, we get, an, we get that idea from the gospel because we are told that the father sees him from afar and he runs out and welcomes his son. If the father had been had spied, spied his son from afar, that would have meant that perhaps every day, many times during the day, he would have been on the lookout just in case the son would return. That is how God our Father acts also with us. He is the one who takes the initiative. He awaits each and every single one of us, his children, to go back to him. And instead of punishing us, he embraces us. His mercy is without limits, no matter how much we have strayed away from him. And not only that, the Father shows us how God rejoices at our return. Because the Father not only welcomes the Son back, but He holds a feast. He commands the servants to dress Him up, put rings on His fingers, and to kill the fattened calf for a celebration. That is the joy in heaven over a sinner who returns to God, over a sinner who repents. But there are certain elements we have to consider here also. We have to consider, as mentioned earlier, that it is not we who take the initiative. It is God always who takes the initiative. Mercy, as Pope Francis would point out in his apostolic letter, Misericordia et Misera, is always a gratuitous act of our Heavenly Father, an unconditional and unmerited act of love. Yes, we do not merit the love of God. Much in the same way as the Son did not merit the love of his father. His father gave it to him freely, despite all that the son had done. Therefore, you and I have to give thanks to God that he is merciful. Rather than judge us without any mercy, God embraces us whenever we return to him. Pope Francis would therefore continue saying, consequently, we cannot risk opposing the full freedom of the love with which God enters into the life of every person. Mercy is this concrete action of love that, by forgiving, transforms and changes our lives. What is the Holy Father trying to say? If God is merciful, we also have to be merciful. We cannot place ourselves above God. If God forgives, you and I also have to learn how to forgive, first of all, ourselves each time we run away from God. And we have to learn also how to forgive others, other persons who offend our Lord. And not only this, another idea that Pope Francis would highlight is that mercy gives rise to joy because our hearts are open to the hope of a new life. The joy of forgiveness is inexpressible, yet it radiates all around us whenever we experience forgiveness. Yes, there is great joy in heaven over one sinner who returns to the fold. Think about other parables in the gospel. The sheep that has gone astray and is lost, and the shepherd leaves the other 99 and goes out in search of that lost sheep. 
and he rejoices when he finds it. The coin that has been lost and how the owner of the coin rejoices at discovering it in the house. Well, yes, when God extends his mercy, <clears throat> he shows us his love, he pours forth in us his great goodness. And for that reason, you and I, understanding this and experiencing this, now encounter joy whenever we return. For that reason, when you talk about conversion of heart, interior repentance, a repentance, this uh, entails on our part being open to God's love in the first place, allowing God to enter into our souls and transform us with His grace. Evidently, we facilitate this also with our own personal dispositions. You and I can desire to return to the Father's house much in the same way as the prodigal son coming to his senses. There may have been moments, perhaps, when, yes, we have lost the way. In a moment of madness, if you could put it that way. A moment of, perhaps, intense emotion that leads us to stray away from what we know with our reason to be the true good. But then, God always does something somehow to jolt us from that state of lukewarmness, that state of mediocrity, of indifference, perhaps. And then he tells us, well, look, how much I love you and how much I would want you to return. And maybe coming to our senses, like the prodigal son, we go back to the Father's house and how joyful we are. In my pastoral experience, I have, I have encountered souls who, after returning to God, for forgiveness with the sacrament of confession, all we say that it is as if a great burden has been lifted from their shoulders. How great their joy is when they have experienced forgiveness, especially if they have been away from the sacrament of penance and reconciliation for a very long time. But even then, even if a person goes regularly to confession, that same joy can be experienced if a person truly repents, maybe most of the time in little things. Perhaps we commit only venial sins. And well, maybe it's not proper to say only venial sins because any sin, an offense against God, should always pain us because we love Him so much and we know that He loves us so much. But however, we desire to go back to Him. And perhaps we go back penitential souls, we are, by praying an act of contrition, which is what can forgive venial sins. We ask God for pardon, not only once but many times during the day. And, and then He forgives us. If we have strayed mortally, committing a grievous sin, and we go to the sacrament of confession, we kneeling down before the priest, perhaps, we ask God for that forgiveness through the minister that he has instituted to be an instrument of forgiveness. And then afterwards, what great joy. We experience that whenever we hear those words, and I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes, let us be truly penitential souls because it gives a lot of joy to us because we know we are loved by God, and we want to love Him in return. In these times of the pandemic, we may not have had the opportunity to take advantage of the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of confession, of reconciliation. But little by little, we can look forward to the time when we can once again avail of the sacrament of mercy in order that way to return to the fold, to return to God. And then, if we cannot, for one reason or another, a physical impossibility, um, or perhaps also because of the danger of contagion, well, let us make it the point to ask God for His grace so that you and I can make a truly perfect act of contrition. It is God who has to give us the grace to be able to do so. And He is willingly going to give that if we ask with all sincerity, Lord, forgive me. 
I have sinned. But I would want to go back to you immediately, as soon as possible, to the sacrament that you have given us, the sacrament of forgiveness. And what great joy we experience after that. May all of us, therefore, follow Jesus in this way. He is our brother who walks beside us. He wants us to return to the Father. He shows us the way. He has established the sacrament of forgiveness. Will a Jesus-centered life would not necessarily have to involve returning to God, taking advantage of His mercy, and following the footsteps of Christ. I therefore pray for all of you that you take advantage of the great sacrament of reconciliation, which gives joy to the soul, a lot of peace, because we know very well that God shows us his mercy. And may God, in his mercy, bless all of you.